So a lot of force problems involve pulleys. A pulley, you've probably seen, is a little kind of wheelie thing that you can put a rope over, um, and they serve one purpose pretty much exclusively. Um, and that one purpose is what a function of a pulley is. Uh, is a pulley redirects force. It, change the direction, it changes the direction of a force. Um, you can set them up in such a way, uh, you should look up a block and tackle, uh, and you can use them to make such that I can tug on a rope, and if you set up your pulleys in a certain way, um, then you're able to pull with maybe five newtons and lift something that weighs 10 newtons, um, which is a cool application. But uh, for our purposes, we're just going to be talking about them redirecting the force. So the most pretty classic example of this is if we have uh, a table and we have a pulley right here, um, and in these problems we're assuming that pulleys are massless and frictionless. Um, and we're going to place a block right here. Uh, let's say it's mass M1. And we're going to tie it over this pulley, and there's another block hanging of mass M2. So those are going to be our two pulleys, our two blocks attached to that pulley. Um, so we're going to approach this the same exact way we approach pretty much all of our force problems. Where, if you don't remember, uh, step one is to identify uh, the relevant objects. Step two uh, is set up your free body diagram. Step three is choose your coordinates. Step four is set up your sum of forces equation. And step five is solve. So this is a two body problem. Um, so we're going to set up two, of, uh, two equations. Um, the trickier part of this is something we have to be careful about that we haven't had to in the past, uh, which is choosing the coordinates. So step one, we choose our relevant objects, right? So our relevant objects here are the boxes. Step two, we're going to draw our free body diagram. So uh, for the block on top, M1, I have uh, M1G down, which doesn't really matter because it's balanced by M1G up, so it's not going to be moving up or down at all. Um, but we do have a force to the right, a force from the rope, right? That force is called tension. I'm going to call it tension. Um, and let's add that up here, too. So it'll be pulleys and tension. So tension uh, is the force that is inside of a, a, a rope when you pull it taut, right? If I pull on a rope, I feel pulled in the opposite direction, towards the rope, right? If me and a, a friend are having a tug of war, um, I'm pulling. He feels a full force pulling towards me, and I feel a force pulling towards him. So tension acts in opposite directions. Um, for the purposes of all of this, we're going to assume that tension is uniform throughout the rope, um, and that our rope itself has uniform mass. More accurately, it has zero mass. Um, but yeah, so tension is the same throughout the entire rope. So if both of these blocks feel tension. Um, that's what is, uh, is holding this block up and is pulling this block to the right. Um, the key thing here is all we have to do is write T if we see the rope. Tension accounts for the fact that, yeah, this block is pulling down, right? So it's going to be kind of be transmitting a force through this rope onto this block. That is tension. Tension accounts for all of that. Um, so that's our free body diagram for the first mass. For the second block, two, uh, we're going to have uh, gravity pulling it down. So M2G down. And we're going to have tension holding it up. Right. So for step three, we need to choose our coordinates. Okay. So when you choose your coordinates for step three, you want to make sure that the tensions have opposite signs. You need to be consistent with the way you set up your coordinates. So if we choose this, let's say we choose right to be positive and left to be negative, um, then we really kind of designated the rope as this is the positive direction and that's the negative direction. So if we follow this down, it means that down needs to be positive and up is negative. And this will give tension the opposite signs that we want. So that's step three. That's why we have to be a little bit careful when choosing your coordinates. Um, you, know, if you have to make sure that you choose them in such a way that's consistent along the rope. So because you know, really this is a very similar to the problem since uh, pulleys just redirect forces. It's a very similar problem to if you just took this rotated it up here, and then you had a flat surface, and you just had two blocks connected by a rope. Um, very, very similar. 
So step four is to go ahead and write our force equations. So for the first block here, uh, we're going to add up the forces in the x direction, uh, and that's only tension. And tension is going to be equal to mass, m1, times acceleration, a. Uh, these blocks connected by a rope still have the same acceleration, the same magnitude of acceleration. The direction, obviously, is going to be different. This is accelerating down, this is accelerating to the right. But the magnitude of acceleration is the same. So for our second block, we're going to add up the forces in the y direction. And in the y direction, we have our positive direction is down. So we have m2g minus t is equal to m2a. So uh, from here, we can make our substitutions like we did with past two-body problems. Um, so we're, let's say that uh, t is equal to m1a, and we're going to plug this into this equation. So you have m2g minus m1a is equal to m2a. And like every problem, most problems like this, uh, I'm just looking for the acceleration of the system and, and the tension in the rope. Because um, I don't know what this tension is, right? It's something we have to find. So that's why I'm going to say this is this and plug it in. So now we can solve for a. So we have m2g uh, is equal to m2, m1a plus m2a. And we can pull out the a. So this gives us m2g equals a times m1 plus m2. Uh, and then we can divide both sides by m1 plus m2. And we get that a is equal to m2g divided by m1 plus m2. That's our acceleration. We're not done yet, though, because we also want to find tension, right? So tension is equal to m1 times a. So we found a. Now we can plug it back in. So our tension is going to be m1 times m2 times g divided by m1 plus m2. And that's the amount of force uh, that is uh, the rope is exerting on the blocks. So that is how you approach problems that have uh, pulleys and tension. Pulleys just redirect forces. So you basically set this up the same exact way you would as every, anything else. Um, and tension... Uh, is going to be an unknown quantity generally, and you're going to want to solve for that tension uh, through these, this substitution method. Uh, additionally, pulleys, uh, make sure when you have pulleys like this and the tension in the rope, you have to choose your coordinates very carefully. Uh, you want one direction of the rope to be positive and the other to be negative. You're really choosing almost along the pulley, right? You're going to say that clockwise uh, is positive, right? So up here, clockwise, that one's positive, that way's positive, other way's negative good check is just make sure your tension has opposite signs, right? So here we have positive tension, here we have minus tension. And that's just because they're in opposite directions. If I pull, I feel a force that way. If my friend pulls over there, I, he feels a force towards me. So that's how to solve problems involving pulleys and tension.